Good morning, New Eden. Today is October 15th, 2023, and this is the Federation Frontline Report. My name is Frozen Fallout, and I will be your host today. Co-hosting with me is Samson. Good morning, New Eden. And we have an extremely special guest here today. We are going to be extreme, in extreme leader only. of. <laughs> so I was gonna say only moderately special. Don't worry. Oh my God, man! No, the, the hanging moderately. out with you at FanFest was epic. Like highlight, highlight of the uh, of the trip, for sure. Um, but yeah, leader of Spectre Fleet, Virian is with us here today. How are you doing, Virian? I'm doing fantastic. Had a lovely weekend. Blow up some capitals uh, the entire weekend. So it's been good fun. Yeah. So tell us. Uh, I you know I kind of introduced you as the leader of Spectre Fleet, but you know, uh, who do you fly with, and uh, you know, what are you up to these days? What's what's a what's a day in the life of Virian in Eve Online like? <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I'm Virian Stoneshard. Uh, I run Spectre Fleet together with Odyssey. Um, on the offside, I fly with Hidden Leaf Village Ninja Turbo Assassin Squad Esports. Wow, I got that right in one go. That usually <laughs> doesn't happen. <laughs> nice. Uh, that is actually probably going to be the highlight of today, me getting that one right. Um, yeah, so mace, uh, mainly the one thing I do is log in, run fleets, log off, go back home. Um, unless it's something with Jutsu, then usually I end up joining somebody else's fleet. Um, but pretty much my entire life as Eve is running PvP fleets, nothing else. That's awesome. The, this is the way. Yeah, what? this is the way. That That is the, the life of Eve. Uh, so I'm guessing you haven't checked out any of the Crimson Harvest uh, event then. Uh, I have checked out people running the Crimson Harvest event. <laughs> <laughs> and turned them into Rex. I have I have avoided uh, people hunting me down in it so far, but I usually try and play it about a hundred to two hundred kilometers off of the warp in points. So yeah, I... you have to. That's like the one way to play it safe because uh, we've already killed five marauders running sites. I oh, believe. sweet! In low sector zero point zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah just the low sec ones. Wow. Yeah, that is. Um, so I'm guessing you're going in pretty heavy with the. Um, tackle so you have to have like a combat recon or uh, um it, it kind of depends on what we're doing most of the time i le let my hunters just decide what ships they're comfortable in um but it tends to be still scepters heat gates um other assault frigates stuff like that so you're not Manus finding Royce. problems with the npcs when you're going in on these guys it's a lot easier when you're bringing in 50 people behind you to deal with the NPCs. <laughs> well, the, so, but your initial tackle, your hunters are the ones that are at danger, right? Because if they um, don't come in true. heavy, they're going to get, like, smacked down by the NPCs. It is a bit tricky because some of the sites are um, a bit cracked. Uh, I've had my instant warp hecate in travel mode tackled by rats before. Even <laughs> though I spammed warp, so the rats can be a bit cracked. Um, which is very awkward because that means you have to uh, suddenly extract your your hunting hecate from a bunch of rats. I have had to call in the fleet to save me once or twice, but yeah. Yeah, it's uh, definitely uh, it, it, an interesting kind of scenario because I've been more avoiding trying to hunt in these sites because I like to go with like thrashers and stuff like that, and it's like. Okay, if you just bring in a Thrasher into this, you know, even if you bring twenty of them, you know, thirty of them, fifty of They're them, all gonna it's gonna blow up one by one. You are on a time target. limit. Yeah, they will blow up. Yeah, I mean, usually what you find is if there's somebody already running the site, um, most of the rats are gonna be on them. Sure, they're gonna switch, but usually you can kill whoever's running the site before too long. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's definitely an interesting play because I've and I've actually kind of been like because the skins are so cool. I was like, I have to get this for my Moros. I need this for like you know the uh, battleships that they handed out the Dominics. <clears throat> Although the Dominics I have already are really cool. The drone skin is super fucking. Oh cool yeah, 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 I know the one you're talking about. And thank you. I know there's a lot of follows I, at the end of the show. I think we're gonna do we we just by the way, Virian is our one thousandth follower he is the yeah, 1000 no, customer five more subs to everybody <laughs> thank you thank you 
Um, and yeah, we're, uh, Samson's been handing out subs, and thank you all for anybody who has subscribed or followed while we're doing this. Um, we'll get to that. We will also be getting to questions and stuff like that. If you guys uh, have questions, me and Samson will try and monitor chat as best as we can. Um, I'm working on it. And uh, so definitely um, thank you all for the follows, and we'll do a sub. I think after the show, we're going to do like a special giveaway. Um, there's some things that I might have that might be super cool to give out to some people. We'll maybe even do a poll on it. Uh, but moving forward, um, I would like you to take us in the way back machine period. So when did you start way playing? Back. Yeah, well, is it way back, I guess. Uh, I mean, <laughs> um, but when did you start certainly... playing and, and how did you get into EVE Online? Um, so I started playing, I think, how most people do when one of their friends says, hey, there's this cool sci-fi game, and uh, they kind of drag you along. Um, I happened to pick some interesting people to get me started in the game, because this was uh, circa 2011, and this was during the time where I believe the two friends I was starting with were playing in Razor Alliance. Uh, no, Nolly Seconda, even. Christ, that's a so long ago. Um, and at some point, they were setting up a pause. Nah, me as a new bro, I had no idea what a pause is. Sounded cool. Um, a different friend of mine was also playing Eva, found out at the time. So I was like, oh, hey, cool. I'm going to go uh, chill with him for a bit, see what he's doing in the game. And they got very, like alerted that oh he's gonna start playing with different people he must be a spy and i shit you not they they were treating me as if i was a spy even though i genuinely had no idea what all the stuff they were talking about was um so for a while i quit um two years later i don't know if it was two years later but at some point later i uh, picked the game back up with the uh, the other friend um he was quitting he gave me a second account so I started EVE as a new bro, immediately running two accounts already, which was um, a weird benefit. <laughs> That's an interesting uh, introduction to EVE, but also very EVE, like... Oh and, yeah, and, and it was very super handy because uh, early on that, that already let me do a lot of things um, by having a second account to do your hauling and that kind of stuff, or even just utility like Sinos and stuff back in the day. Um, so it was super handy. Um, but yeah, it was uh, it was an interesting start, and um, so did you yeah. jump into like PvP right away, or was no, it PVE? No, no, no. I was your typical like high sec level four running Nubro for a long time. <laughs> okay, so what were you doing with your second account uh, during that time? Uh, um, were you using it as like Logi or using it? Yeah, as... utility mostly, like my hauling alt in case I needed stuff moved, and. Um... Yeah, just so you I weren't dual remember. boxing the the missions. You were no, 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 no. I wasn't good enough to do dual boxing. Yet. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, so, it, uh, it takes I, I a while to learn. The line, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead, sorry. I basically ran the line for what a lot of new players kind of do is just hang out in high sec for a little while, and then you're like, all right, nil sec is where I can make more money. So I became a Providence resident. That was uh, certainly something. I've, I've taken a uh, stint out into Providence as actually a neutral, like, not trying to kill anybody, just, you know, trying to make yeah, the money it was just an like amazing you did. place. Um, yeah. But yeah, from... I, I can't even remember exactly how it happened, but what I reckon at some point is, yeah, we was living in Provi, uh, you come across Spectre Fleets around there back then, uh, that was our, our main stomping ground for several years, and uh, at some point I ended up joining them. Which, so, uh, so what what year was this when you joined? Uh, I think I've been flying with Spectre Fleet for seven or eight years now, so that makes that 2014, 2015, I think. Okay, so yeah, that's a uh, chunk of time. That's that's a huge chunk of time. So did you start off and jump or like head in and uh, run fleets as a newbie? Because it happens sometimes. So yeah. Um... I was already kind of the kind of SC that would be like, hey, uh, you know, let's take our five friends in dumb cruisers across faction or across low sec and see what happens and quote unquote FCing those five people. <laughs> um, and yeah, it wasn't too long before I also started running fleets in Bravi respectively, and uh, I happened to be in between studies for a lot of that time. Um, I dropped out of free studies and ended up working. So I had a lot of spare times those years. 
uh, which ended up me being um, practically running gate camps and fleets through Pravi 24-7 for months at a time. So uh, I racked the time and experience up pretty quickly doing that. Do you have any like uh, special moments that you remember from like the the first FCing, where did you have any like catastrophic failures or unbelievable oh, yes. successes? Oh God, yes, I had a catastrophic failure. Uh, one of my favorite stories to tell for any new FC or aspiring FC who is worried about losing a fleet. Um, me as a fairly new FC uh, managed to get almost 150 bombers and recons pipe bombed in Providence. Don't worry, you really can't screw up harder than I did. <laughs> Who'd you get pop pipe Challenge from? accepted. Uh, Profi. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, this uh, we were trying to set up like this this grand blob fleet where I was going to use my Phoenix as bait, um, together with a really really well known blobs FC back in the day, right, Rick? Um, but he had to go because of real life reasons. So there's me with a bait Phoenix. As a fairly new FC and almost 150 people to, to get a target for, and I ran out of ideas, so eventually we started gating the Phoenix, and that got us. <laughs> <my point. laughs> Did you lose the Not Phoenix good. as well? Uh, we lost the Phoenix in a bit of like a, a actually like decent fight afterwards. So oh really? It wasn't so the you... end of the world. We still got somewhat of a fight out of it. It was a hull tank phoenix. Uh, I think if I remember correctly, it was all tank phoenix. So we just started uh, fragging some people, and a couple of us still got on some kills. But yeah, it was a mess. We got a lot of people bombed, but you know, it's a learning experience. You move on. And that's what SRP is for. Yes. Yeah. Um, do you have any uh, like times that you would say? Um are like the like massive like your first like massive catch that you got as like an fc or something that um, like really stood out where you were like okay this is this is crazy uh i'd say be my first and my second super kill both were uh, around the same time in providence we uh we ended up setting up some uh, bait for one of them um, which was funny because the, the bait that was dropped on was myself in an Inazu and um the people we were working with were not quite coordinated on the fact that I was going to be in an Inazu. So after they shot the bait or the the Nyx that we'd finally baited out, they also blew up my Inazu. Oops, but worth it, I'd say. Um, but yeah, um, one of my my favorite moments was um, the first super I ever caught with Spectre Fleet. Um, we dropped on it with uh, I was flying with Honorable Third Party at the time, um, which was. Not even like a great success on my part, it was more like a grand failure on the super pilot's part because um, somebody had spotted him warping between structures and a pass several times and they had set up a bookmark for us to uh, drop a bubble and hopefully intercept him. So I set my saber up right on that bookmark, set up a bubble, and I shit you not, I watched the snicks just go <laughs> right by the bubble because the bubble was in a bad spot. <laughs> and everybody on comms is like, oh no, we just lost the Knicks. Uh, we're all just kind of upset. And meanwhile, while my saber is visible, bubbling his paws, he warps back to the structure. We all lose our minds, like, why is this guy warping back? I fix the position, set up a bubble again, and uh, shit, you know, he warped back into the bubble, and we're all just pissing ourselves on comms. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it wasn't like I said, a gr not so much a great success on my part. Sometimes you just need the enemy to fail multiple times in a row, but yeah, it was good times. That's epic. That's that's when, um, you know, you really, like, feel like you stepped it up and you've gotten into, like, I remember being on, like, my first, like, super kills um, and, like, those are memories that you have, like, forever entrenched in your brain, like, I just oh, made yeah, somebody I lose an insane amount of money. <laughs> yeah, I mean, dur during those days in EVE, especially for myself, uh, I certainly didn't have the money to fly a super yet, so this was like a huge thing for me. So how did you end up uh, working your way up the ranks in uh, um, Spectre Fleet in the beginning? Or did you, did you just for a long time just be a standard FC? 
Uh, for several years, I'd say even, I think I was just FCing, um, but at some point, you know, I'm a fairly, um, I wouldn't say greedy, but I like to, I like to end up somewhere important. Um, so we had somebody who was doing the Alliance Tournament team for Spectre Fleet, and last minute, they dropped out and nobody else was doing it so sure i've watched a lot of tournaments in recent years so i'll i'll pick it up and uh i ended up running the first alliance room team and that was sort of weaseling my way into a quote unquote like leadership position because i was doing something official for spectre fleet right and somehow that allowed me to convince the rest of spectre fleet leadership that yes yeah, sure virian is also spectre fleet like commanding <laughs> leadership somehow and uh yeah everybody else kind of quit over the years and i didn't so somehow i managed to weasel myself into a position where people thought it was a good idea if they would uh, listen to what i said and uh, that was a mistake but here we are so you always take the bait yeah yep. oh yeah definitely um so how many like uh like fan fests or player meetups have have you been to in the past or was this Ooh, one of your first um, i'm guessing not so this was my second fan fest but i used to go to uh Easterdam. i think i've done that three years i also went to g fleet twice which is in berlin that was uh, always very fun and i've been to eve london once so i gotta say that was my least favorite so compared to this this year to last year, what, what uh, how did you feel, uh, or the last time that you went, I guess, if it was um, I'd say this year is a lot better, definitely. They, all, they, they really stepped up their game on making sure that there was more than just presentations. Um, there was a lot more to just hang out and do stuff with. Also, just more space, like even just seating, because it's... The, the the main the same reason that I didn't enjoy Eve London um, is that Eve London felt like more of a party, but you didn't have anywhere to just hang out and chill and catch up with people, and that's the main thing you go to for these uh, these conventions. And this year, Eve uh, Fan Fest had way more places to just sit down, have a chat, you know, socialize with people. Yeah, I felt like they had a lot of really good space um, for for everything, and um, and this was the most packed year that um, has ever existed, right? This is the first time that they actually stopped selling tickets, from my understanding. Ooh, I don't know about that, or but not, it was uh, Or it that was they weren't expecting to stop selling tickets this year. I don't know about that part, but yeah, it was uh, it was it was awesome. They they really stepped up the space as well. Like they had a lot more room in just like even the, the merch hall and the whole uh, history of Eve show off and that kind of stuff. So um, they used a lot more of the venue, especially the main stage. If you compared how much they used the main stage this year versus last year, and it was, it, that was already like, okay, yep, there's way more people this year. Yeah, the, um, they did say during the presentation uh, that it was the first sold out fan fest. I did hear that, uh, so I, okay. I don't know. I don't know what that means per se uh, in terms of you know stopping of selling of tickets, but it sounded like it was the first sold out, and and I. That yeah, the main the main hall or it was or um, it was almost full for some of those presentations. Yeah, no, it was, it was absolutely packed. Um, I know that we went to, to a lot of the presentation rooms early on just to just to make sure that we'd had a seat at least. There's yeah, also yeah. A, a very fond memory during the keynote of uh, Benzman um, staying ready at the door, and I shit you not full-on sprinting to get front row seats at the keynote that was uh <laughs> entertaining yeah and uh, uh mac uh rambro says uh i enjoyed the history of eve wall hope they upload that on uh, to the website for people to view and that was something that i remember i like looked at that and i was like wait a minute what they have every year here with a nice little like breakdown that uh you know seemed well written and so i like read a few of them and then the first thing i did was just like picture 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 yeah, picture, yeah, yeah. picture and um, I, uh, I did post that on facebook as well so there's oh, like, nice. somewhat of a digital copy of it out there i uh grabbed the screenshot of the most important part the uh introduction of commander stories with a picture of the magus and uh chucked that to starlight one of our famous commander story pilots <laughs> But uh, no, that that was also very cool, honestly, because um, 
Yeah, there's so many times where you're like looking back and you don't realize just how many years and like changes and stories and stuff have happened that you're you don't even like really actively remember anymore and you see it all like on this massive wall displayed like change by change. It was uh quite cool to look back at. Yeah, I um I also got an Eve Online magazine from 2006, so that's when I truly started playing this game. I dabbled before, like I looked at the uh, the beta when um, we were all doing a bunch of beta stuff back in 2003 or so, and um, you know checking out all the new MMORs because we uh, we came from um, um, Ultima Online. And so that had a very similar kind of feeling of what Eve um, has. And so one of my buddies was like, it's space, it's Ultima Online, but it's, it's uh, you know, like, it's this crazy weird thing. And we, we all are big space, you know, lovers, of course. Um, and so we tried it, or I tried it out for like two days, and I was like, I have no idea what the hell is going on in this game. <laughs> like, it seems like there's a lot of potential, but... All I have is this Viator or whatever flying around. I don't get it. Um, and then I tried picking it up in like 2005, but 2006 is when I actually started playing. And um, Frozen Fallout was created in November 2006. And then I got, uh, I spun the wheel and I got uh, Eve Online. Like randomly, I just grabbed the, uh, a random magazine and it ended up being the 2006 one. And I was like, ah like when reading through it i was just like man i remember this stuff like it you know i had just gotten into the game so i was reading about all the new changes that had kind of happened and um it was just, like so nostalgic to go back and like read that magazine yeah it's um i found it fun because uh i ended up mostly tracing back um especially like trying to compare when I think I started and when I think, oh yeah, that's probably when these and these changes happened and you just realize, like, damn, I was really off the mark. This was, like, years and years later or stuff like that. It was, uh... Human a memory. Like a, yeah, reality, like, a, a bit of a, a reality check of, like, wow, I, I really misremember some of these years. Yeah, human memory is very interesting. Um, I don't even trust the... Nostalgia plays a big part. And nostalgia is huge. Um, and nostalgia, nostalgia goggles. Uh, but like, just even remembering uh, like sequence of events and stuff like that. Like our brain normally isn't very, you know, good at that. There's certain people out there that have like the ability to really, you know, capture that properly. Um, but yeah, even, I'm not even, one of those people. I'm not one of them, and I because I'm so far from it, I even question those people. I'm like, let's go to the blade of grass. Which way did the blade of grass move when you were <laughs> looking at it in 2000? You know, four like yep. May first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, tell me that, and then then I'll think you have got the epic memory that you. Yeah, say no, you it was do, cool but. to look back at because uh, <laughs> yeah, even even just changes that you maybe forgot about entirely. That like, oh hey, you know, I remember we got this battle because they introduced this and this stuff and stuff like that. So it's uh, it was very nice to have like a proper detailed look back at all those years. Yeah, I, I was I... really happy to look through it all. I, I don't I don't I don't say that I have that memory anymore because of people like Frozen because they always challenge you it's a pain in the ass but <clears throat> I will say this because it was my favorite memory and my first memory of Virian FCing it wasn't even an official Spectre fleet it was just in Tama and uh, it was pretty close to it was probably several months before um, Tama decided to get blown up i don't know i don't know who decided that i'm not gonna mention names <laughs> <laughs> sorry um but uh all of a sudden there's just vargers in 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 tama and oh God, varian, yeah. varian shows up in in tama bro chat i don't even know what it was called it was a chat it was a specific chat for like the tama bros we weren't it, we weren't blue to each other um, although I think I think uh, Lurk blew me or something and got mad later when I killed him <laughs> when I was outside of the chat. But um, <clears throat> we were we were we were just chilling and and all of a sudden all these Vargas show up and Virian shows up in, in in chat and we're talking and then we're we're in Space Detroit R.I.P. Space Detroit and um, Virian's handing me a Newt Geddon because he thinks I'm somebody's alt. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I was like, okay. I, yeah, let's do this. We went out there. We got um, Varger Bingo, 
that day. I, yes. I lost I lost oh, Armageddon, man. but but we had I, I had my entire board top kills were all vargers. So <laughs> yeah, like, it was uh, something we've been trying. But finally, the entire row that you have on the top of the kill of like your mo recent most uh, expensive kills, I finally got it to a point where it was all vargers. <laughs> Yeah, that was that day. It was that day because that. Well, I don't know if it was if that was the same day for you, but it definitely was for me because it was all Vargas and and it was a lot. It was a lot of fun. Like, and it was the first time I think that I, I had uh, been in a like a bigger fight with a with a battleship. So yeah. Yeah, that's fun because uh, yeah, that was just mostly like the the Tama solo PVPers hangout club in case there was something yes. they needed to gang up on. Yes, it was, <laughs> dude. It was fun because I would be like, uh, "Hey guys, I got a, a, a Stratios tackled on a large for some reason. I don't know why it's here, but come blow it up." Um, but yeah, that was a lot of fun back in the day. Um, shout out to those guys. But there's uh, some, in that... uh, there's some really cool guys in there as well, like uh, Tony, who would often end yeah. up baiting for us. I, I have I have his phoenix kill on my top. He well, used to he, be on top kills. He once baited for us in a Kronos and was managing to hold off against. I think it was four different Vargers over the course of time that would warp in. We'd kill one, another would warp in, two Damn. more came in, and like his Kronos managed to hold out the entire fight and do like a significant amount of the damage while we were just <laughs> nuding out their tank with Geddens and stuff like that. It was awesome. Dude, there was just some, was that that was in Tama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, there's just something about Tama, dude. So much stuff happened in Tama, but uh, in Which that comes same vein, data, man, it's it's hard to resist. Yeah, that's energy. true. The nerve gate. Uh, what, what's been probably one of your most uh, like standout PvP experiences in Eve? Hmm. Shit, that's a broad one. Um. Or most fun, or most recent that was. But we want me. the best, so it's very specific. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're asking over the course of genuinely uh, <laughs> six or seven years, where ninety percent of all I've done in Eve is PVP fleet. So that's Should that's a very to, to this year. <laughs> um. You can limit oi, 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 oi. Uh, um. I mean, even this year, this was still, this was, was this this year? Uh, I'm going to count it. It's technically this year, not the, the full year, but last December, <laughs> um, we made friends with a new group in EVE, uh, Astral Acquisitions, um, because out of nowhere, they appear in Abazon with a fleet of expensive shield battleships and T3s and, and a couple of like faction battle cruisers, um, a fax, some carriers and other stuff. And... Uh, I ended up YOLOing my own Phoenix Navy issue into them uh, and fighting them for like half an hour. <laughs> um, I killed a couple of their subcasts, but obviously I, it's a Phoenix Navy. I can't kill capitals with it, not anytime soon. So after half an hour of tanking them on my own, uh, I finally get another Spectre Fleet FC to be like, hey, maybe we should form a fleet because this is, there's, <laughs> there's kills to be had in here. Uh, all in all, we ended up fighting for, I think, close to an hour long. Um, where they brought in like three more carriers and another fax and stuff like that and um, absolutely insane fight and uh, now those guys kept keep coming back every now and then to bring us like semi arranged fights of random stuff that they want to get blown up and I know that they're uh, preparing for another Christmas offensive so that'll mm -hmm. be very fun no, those and it's fun because those kind of people if you give them good fights they end up becoming yeah frenemies essentially yeah, frenemies. That's what. That's one of the things that's really fun in Eve, I think. But I do recall <clears throat> a very large uh, Tengu fleet that we fought in Abazon. Was that those guys? Uh, no, that wasn't Tengus. those guys. Oh, okay. That was no, that was. was um, I forget which group it was, but they were trying to third party uh, one kitty. of our timers that we're fighting. Yeah, that's a kitty oh. who doesn't know how to shut up. And the reason that my chair is so busted up. Yeah, that's what it's, you know, you got to pay the tax. And to make an appearance. Cheese tax, <laughs> chair tax. Yep. Yeah. yeah, there's no stopping her from uh, solve or uh, ruining my chair, but yeah, <laughs> worth it. I usually have Janeway on, uh, it, whenever I'm working and sometimes when I'm podcasting, um, I've got a, a cat that'll just paw at the door the entire time. <laughs> Be like, hey. <laughs> Let me if in. I don't let them in the let room, in. they become loud enough that we would probably hear them on stream. <laughs> yeah. yeah, my cats don't give a shit. They're old and they're just chilling and they're laying on the bed right now after breakfast. They don't care <laughs> that I'm in here. Yeah, I have one kitty who's like 13 years old. 
All she wants is just lay down with people and get attention. Yes, yes. See, I have I have one of my favorite memories from Spectre Feet Fleet this year, I would say. Spectre would, Feet. Spectre Fleet Fleet. Ah. Spectre Show Feet. The don't type that show like your fans. Um, the was uh, we were doing an Abzan uh, gate camp, and Nisawa car sh cartel showed up uh, when they were testing out a bunch of Mirbadon Navy issues. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And yep, so yep. that was on the uh, uh, intro kind of video that we have, um, and so I was able to get a recording of it um, because I used to be part of Nisawa Cartel, um, our our old corporation, Golden Age Stories. Um, we're now on a whole new rebranding thing, so we're all just Federation Frontline Report in game everywhere else. But we used to be called not too long ago, actually, Golden Age Stories. And um, I was trying to set up a station in Nisawa, and they, like, of course, blew uh, a moon miner, and of course, they just went and blew it up. And then they messaged me afterwards, and they were like, Why did you try setting this up? Like, this is just an easy way for us to get a core you know thanks for doing that but what's what the hell is going on here and i'm like i don't know it's me and my buddy i've been playing forever and, um you know i just was curious it was worth it to just see what would happen if i threw up a tower who would come and blow it up or what was going to happen could i get it up for a little while yeah, yeah, whatever yeah. you know it was a test and they were like dude just join up with us you can put up as many structures as you want around here we're, we're buddies with snuff so you don't have yeah, to worry about it. Yeah, and to them, it's also up. not really worth to have to put in all the effort to grind down something like a POS for just a POS kill bill. Like, they know they're not really going to get much else out of it, probably. Right, yep, and like, uh, uh, upwell structures are, you know, a pain in the ass, you know. You, yeah. And this was before the change where you had only, you only have one timer now, but that had oh, like, God, all yeah, of the that timers. Oh, God, yeah, that was not so fun. Yeah, so that was, uh, it was really awesome, like, flying with them. So, they came into system and they were like, okay, they wanted to play around, so we ended up jumping into Harbs, I believe, and just yep. ju going out, engaging them, and just wiping the floor with them. And yeah, their, they were their like, concept of shield Mimrodon sadly did not work out too well. <laughs> It was just, it was so sad. Like, I was like, man, I used to be flying with you guys. I miss, I miss hanging out with the Koreans. Like, I was trying to learn Korean. Um, after they're they're very up with nice them. people. They're they've, very uh, cool. They've helped us out in a lot of fights or, like, even just uh, warned us if Doom was impending and stuff like that. <laughs> they've been very helpful in the past. They're good guys. Shout out to Hale. He was always cool. Gwen. In, in, in Nisua and in, in, in the Tauros. The Tauros, the shining jewel of Black Rise, will someday shining, come back the underneath the control of, of the Galente. <laughs> I really, I, I, I miss living in Nisua, but, uh, or in uh, the Taurus. Like, the, did you, were you ever aware of the, uh, the Taurus new, news agency? Uh, the name does ring a bell, yeah. Um, the this Notorious was like a short-term thing on Reddit, wasn't it, mostly? Uh, no, YouTube. Uh, YouTube. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was YouTube, like, five-minute shorts or so that he would do a news broadcast that would say, oh, Who yeah, died? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Somebody did this with Tama as well, I believe. Um, yeah, so same guy, well. same guy. Oh, Tama, nice, yeah. nice. Yeah, 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 Mr. Monopoly. Well. Big shout-out to Mr. Mr. Monopoly. Monopoly. He's still yeah, around yeah. in-game and eats babies. Um, <laughs> it's it's maybe sin fuegos. <laughs> uh, we just out outed his alt. Oh well. Oh well. If you come to his channel, which is open to everybody, you know it's him. So. Yeah, because that was during the time that Tom was still like super active, and uh, yes. I remember one of the days that I managed to make it on his short, and I was like, "Yeah, badge of honor, let's go." I that was yeah. one of the things got us super motivated. Was we were In like, "We gotta get yeah. on the news. I, like, we have to get on I the was, sports page." He goes, "He goes, that's we should kill this in the tour." It was like my maybe my first night flying with him in, a, in an alt with Frozen, and so we should kill this in the tour us because then we'll get on the news. And then after I learned about the news, that's when I decided that Gwen was going to be the, the butcher of Natoras and just kill everybody until not only was she on the news every week, but she uh, is now the top killer in Natoras. Yeah, it's um, uh, it's fun. It, it, it does still make me a bit sad because I know one of the times uh, one of the guys that was um, mentioned on it ended up uh, passing away later that Ooh. year, but it was also yeah. one of the, the elite solo PvPers from Tama. Oh. that needs uh if memory i'm i'm horrible with names so i always get people mixed up but i believe that was frank hats oh oh what? frank 
I believe so. I don't don't quote me on this. I I'm okay, so, the game, so I don't want to like. No. So, make no, Frank, the wrong I, I flew I flew a lot with Frank Hats, um, yeah. and I fought needs to be real a lot, and I know that needs to be real passed. Oh yeah, yeah, yep, 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 other way around. Yep, that's why I say I'm horrible okay. with names because yeah, I, I, I was gonna say I'm pretty sure Frank's okay. <laughs> I, was like, I was like Frank, <laughs> <It's>... what? No. <laughs> Uh, yeah, needs, uh, that's yeah, why I give the warning. I, I can remember like the most random, useless path. code, but somebody's <laughs> name? No, can't do it. I, I always mix people up with that. It's so annoying. That's fine. But uh, yeah, no, I remember they were on that uh, Tama news uh, uh, quite a few times as well, because yeah, obviously they're doing a solo PP here in there yeah, all the time. Dude. dude always flew a stabber with like snakes. Oh, everything with snakes. That was Tama. <laughs> Tama was snake central. Oh, yeah. yeah. I got. Yeah. I got. I got to learn. I got to learn how to use uh, implants. I don't. Wait a minute. Them. Vigil for Frank, for fearless Frank hats. What? Oh shit! Frank passed away too. Jeez. Yeah, man. I was about to say. I'm pretty sure I as well. Right. Yeah, that was this a was. year ago. Fuck me. Yeah, I didn't yeah. hear about that actually. Fuck Damn, me. man, I that did sucks. Not hear about that. Well, yeah. now we're now we just gonna shut down the show. This sucks. <laughs> uh, yeah, now we're all just depressed. That does suck. Though. It was. Um, um, it was both. It was shitty, country. but it was it was cool to see how many people came together yeah. for what was essentially a solo PvP. It's not oh, like yes. somebody that has that. Dude, huge... I, I would have totally been there, but like, um, didn't know. Yeah, I had a falling out with those guys like <laughs> the month before. It, it happens. There was occasionally a little bit of um, spicy interaction sometimes, and uh, slight yeah, language got, usage. People but... got drama. There was drama, and and like, I don't know. I was I was over it. I was like, I, I love you guys, but like, I'm over it. Oh no, we the general need this drama in my life. But that's R.I.P. Frank Hats needs to be real. And to can, uh, don't worry about because, uh, it. Like we did it to ourselves. We brought up the. Yeah, this is. You know, but it's good to remember people. And no, no, uh, you're fine. Always have. Yeah, no. Thank you, actually. Yeah, thank you. Thank for you, sure. en Enoch, for, for 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 helping us with that. That's no. I, I know it's I know it's sad, but it's better to remember remember them and all the awesomeness that they did. Um, it's so awesome it's, that you can you can go back and uh, oh, check some of those uh, videos. Yes. Yeah. Um. So let's uh, bring it uh, back a little bit here, um, and uh, let's see. Um, what were some of the like highlights that you had at this year's fan fest? Oh, um, well, so last year's fan fest, we all know was, um, yeah, very positive. <laughs> so there was already like not a very high bar for anybody to set on like exciting news, and yeah, I mean, since I mostly live in low sec, I do fleets in all sec as well, obviously. But like most of my recent years have all been in low sec. Um, seeing what happened with the faction warfare revival and now seeing what they're trying to expand on what they're doing with that is uh definitely obviously the main the main ticket and for me um the biggest thing i'm interested in is is that they mentioned how this could expand to non-faction warfare systems like how this influence system and, and that could affect system because um on the off chance of like turning some uh high sec mission running island into low sec suddenly Ooh, that's juicy. That could be very interesting. Or the other way around, where, you know, say Amazon suddenly turns into high sick. We got a backup shop. <laughs> oh, can it, so. it, it? It can go the other way around, can't it? I forgot about uh, that. Yeah, if I yep. believe so. Yeah, if I believe so. Hard on the uh, countering the uh, the influences. So stuff like that could make uh, things very interesting and and finally like shake up uh, territory a little bit. Yeah, it's it, uh, I have almost completely forgot about that. Uh, they because I'm kicked out of high sec, man. They don't let me in there. Mm -hmm. That's uh, but I don't think it's going to be full on high sec like that. It'll be like gates, you know, might be a little bit more dangerous or something like that. But I, I think you'll hopefully be able to dock. I don't want to get kicked out of Yvangir. It will only be temporary, I think, to a certain. Uh, point. I but, uh, I hope not. Yeah, but just um, just being able to change up how things have been going and who lives where and you know that kind of thing makes things interesting yeah and uh, uh jitter by christmas let's do this like uh you know that's the one thing that as a galentian we can um, finally pvp on the undock <laughs> let's go let's do it um easily on the, uh, on the undock you can still do it right now you just have to be really smart about it yeah, yeah, um, yeah. 
but yeah, it's uh, it's the one thing that I think I'm going to join forces very strongly with the uh, Garistas um, from yep. way my uh, FW character that's in the Galente. Although I'm going to put my alt into the Angels because one coolest fucking ships in the universe, brand new Titan that they've been talking about forever. Like that's yep. going to be my my Eve goal now is to get that Titan and find somewhere that I can dock it. Uh, maybe maybe uh, the the big giant Zarzak uh, uh, Zarzak Zar oh, station. Yeah. Maybe that will allow for Titans to dock. <laughs> Only angel that Titans. That would be certainly something. Uh, otherwise, <laughs> you can you can come dock it up in Amamake. I'm sure nothing will go wrong. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, uh, no, no, nobody would ever die there. No, never, never. I, I'll, I'll, I'll make it. I'll make it my first trip. That'll be where I'll go, just nice. for you. So. No, uh, <laughs> I, I have uh, uh, Titan-related goals that I still need to uh, um, manage at some point. Um, I've been sitting on the character Death Star butt plug for a very long time, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure you can put one and one together. What the goal is there. Um, Dal, yep, yeah, they, they did say that, uh, yeah, it's only temporary. Uh, it could, it, if uncombated, I believe that I heard a rumor that uncombatedly, if you, if they ran a simulation on the test server of, like, what happens if no player interacts with this and the angels just go hardcore into doing it, and it just naturally spreads to the entirety of Eve. Like, it just, it will just completely consume Eve if you don't. A, a, like do anything to stop it whatsoever um but that's also during playtest stuff too and also a rumor so i don't know if that's true or not it's something i think i read on e or uh read on reddit um but yeah it's uh, uh, kind of annoying because um i got invited for the playtest uh but the thing is they did the playtest where you had to sign an nda during the, the closing ceremony, and I'm like, um, hello? No, I don't want to miss the closing ceremony. Why? Wh wh what? What the fuck? Why would you do that? You have so, to be really yeah. dedicated to this expansion. That yeah, so much no. so that you will miss the end. <laughs> like you come to FanFest for the keynote, the closing presentation, and like a couple of other presentations and socializing. I'm not gonna miss the the closing presentation for this. Like, this is a, a bit of a bummer, but hey. -oh. Yeah. No. Well, you know. Um, so yeah, that the I I think it looks really good though. The expansion. Um, I'm super excited for like when they announced. Like you said, I felt like I put a low bar. This is my first fan fest ever. I've been playing for you know 16, 17 years or whatever. You know, almost 20 if you count the the back way back in the day when I didn't actually play the game. Um, and I, I I definitely think that there's a like feeling when I came into this where I was like yeah it's gonna be okay um it's you know just going to have a little bit of a uh you know cool thing that they'll put out they'll talk about pirate faction warfare but it'll be next year you know type <laughs> kind of stuff and it'll be all uh they'll talk I mean, about the shooter we got last year so that's right. what a lot of people were kind of expecting right and well I mean we got uh I mean last year for me was actually I wish I had gone last year because I'm you know, I started this podcast like a year before the announcement of Faction Warfare getting an overhaul. Um, and I, because I've been in, in Faction Warfare since day one, I've taken my stints back out to 0, 0.0 and party with goons and then like was like, I want to come back to Faction Warfare, back and forth, back and forth. Um, but I had this feeling that there was going to be change faction warfare that they were going to do it and i didn't know why but i had this like they're going to fix it and people are like they haven't done anything with faction warfare since it came out i don't think you understand faction warfare and i'm like i don't think you've been in faction warfare long enough to understand mm -hmm. that they have done stuff to faction warfare like there is like if you do day one versus uh before the patch came out drastically yep. different drastically different uh you know and if you go just like a couple months they did some more changes a year or two later they did some more changes and they kept on iterating on it but it was really small changes like you know yeah, what yeah, the yeah. tier how Until the tiers last did. year right and then last year they had that Jeez. huge changeover of like faction warfare became great again um everything was uh you know brand new with the feeling of it the map is like fucking Stellaris. It's beautiful. Like the, the it is, 
it's just the the thing obviously last year was this was all things that were announced for like this is happening soon tm and in the meantime, the only like thing oh. that we were happening that we had that was happening yes. right now is the price hike. So yes, no, that was, oh. yeah, that was oh. bad. That was no, that yeah. was you're, it was a painful room to suddenly be sitting in. No, that was that was something that um, and I think that that's an interesting thing that they did this year with having it be right next to the expansion that's coming out um, and and pushing it back and stuff like that really helped because if they had done the same thing. This year and in May told us, hey, you know, in December, you're going to be getting some really cool stuff. People would have been pissed off again. Um, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was as bad as Blizzard and cell phones. Oh, yeah. almost, almost, because at um, least at least they recovered by actually fixing faction warfare. And that's been a huge. You guys have more money, like. right? <laughs> <laughs> but they learned this year. Uh, one thing they didn't learn is how to do the audio on their like presentations because oh, whenever yeah. they do the the video, it's yeah. always way too loud. But um, they did at least learn this year that um, they should have something to show immediately and the gates to Zarzak opening during the event and them actually taking a ship out there during the event that pretty ballsy move and it worked out really cool as well yeah no they the, the uh taking taking us to Zarzak was really really cool um like we couldn't be on our computer right there but at doing least it. they were willing to do it live on stage while we're all watching like there yeah that was people. pretty sick there I recorded the shit out person. of that Mm. Yes, there was a dude in the crowd that he whipped out his laptop, laptop and uh, yeah, that was that was super cool. Um, yeah, I put him up on the big screen. I think. <laughs> yeah. Um, there. Um, yeah, I, I really thought that they they presented this well. Like you, like I was saying, the the bar was set low, and I really felt like they shot it out of the sky. You know, like they were they were yeah. up there by uh, you know the James Webb Telescope. You know, they so. can they can certainly like you can certainly have your opinion about how much you care about the pirate stuff coming in, but as mm -hmm. far as like presenting what they had in a way to get people hooked and interested and giving people content during FanFest and not just being like oh hey there's stuff coming at some point in the next coming months, they at least gave us already like changes and like new stuff happening on a dinner plate at FanFest. So yeah, that, that was way better this year. Yeah, there, it's it's like waking up in the morning and and being told, you know, like getting to unwrap your presents, but being told after you unwrap them that okay, we have to have lunch and you know we got to go see grandma, and then we're gonna come back at night and you're gonna play with your toys, but not <laughs> like you know, four months from now you get to play with yeah, your exactly. toy, you know, like um, it's, it's. But it's also big because that gives people at FanFest something to talk about and and like you know at least gets people interested and more engaged with the event itself as well. They also hinted to this is possibly going to be how 0.0, .0 is going to deal with territorial control to a certain degree as well. Yeah, that, that this is a spread test to the, the borders of Nullsec and stuff like that. So, Well, not uh, just that, that not just the invasion stuff, but how faction warfare yeah, does yeah, yeah. the system of taking something is not necessarily going to be node-based, possibly. It might be more... Or at the very least, it'll, oh. it'll feel much more like front lines. Hey, hey, where hey, you'll be hey doing frozen, stuff. frozen, frozen, frozen. Yep. Stop. stop saying bad stuff about snuff. Don't do it. Oh, Odie's in chat right now. Just... <gasps> oh, sh okay. Yeah, no, not, not a problem. Uh, we we love weren't talking about Welcome. Snuff. We about what, uh, not at all. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. uh, you know, in um, I, I really think that there's a lot of potential stuff that they put out there as well that was kind of good as well. That they have been locked down, it's not necessarily part of the expansion and stuff. Um, like the the statues and the cool ass like uh, visuals of stations definitely oh, got dude. me to be like, okay, I gotta have a station up and now. Like, I will 100%. shamelessly admit that I've spent um, probably hundreds of bucks on cosmetic stuff back in the day in Warframe. So, yeah, if, if, <laughs> yeah. if like, customized skins and effects and, like, skins that become cooler when you get more kill mills and stuff like that, if that happens, 
Uh, uh, oh no. My, my bank my, account? Oh, my no. wallet, where did it go? Why do I... Uh, why am I broke now? Honey, I'm spending a couple thousand uh, dollars on EVE tonight. I know where all of my Alliance Tournament prize money is going towards, let's put it that way. Right. <laughs> well, that's definitely worth it. Um, Speaking of um, the Alliance Tournament maybe taking a real quick shot down a different uh, road that you just opened up to me, is there any memorable experiences you have from the AT? Oh, hell yeah! Um, so, two things that immediately come to mind. Um, our very first match, and this was when the original Spectre Fleet captain left, and our original captain for the Spectre Fleet team, basically all they did was hull rushes. Never anything else, it was purely comedy meme runs, just to, to, to give it a, a punt for the fun of it. Um, so I took over, and I was like, well, I know a thing about Alliance Tournament, I've watched enough matches. Um, sure, I know how to do a, a proper team. Uh, but we won our first two matches. Uh, we won our first match against Goonswarm, which was like actually a fairly close mirrored setup. Um, them with like a Balgorn, a couple battlecruisers, and support frigates, and us with like, Armageddon, a couple battlecruisers, and bombers. Um, we flew it like idiots. Our Logi pilot didn't know that you should stagger reps on small targets like bombers, for example. Uh, one of our bombers was flown by a pilot who had never shown up for practice, but we didn't have anybody, uh, anybody else. Uh, and he threw into a straight line into the enemy team. <laughs> but we still won the match! Oh! Um, I... My smart bomb was the thing to blow up one of our pilots for a, uh, uh, a final blow, so I still have a kill mill of blowing up Paradigm's uh, um, <laughs> uh, Harbinger Navy with my smart bomb, which I will forever laugh about. Uh, that is, yeah, that's, awesome. that's a feat, getting a Harbinger Oh, he's in chat as well. Nice. Yeah, maybe, he, he, maybe he can find the Z kill. Traitor! <laughs> Uh, but the second match was even more funny because um, we ended up against Blades of Grass and they brought a hull rush against us and I, we had seen them fight in a different match a little bit earlier and um, the most hilarious thing is that from a, f a couple of the matches earlier that day I had come up with the genius of idea of like hey a drone team with no logi purely drone cruisers that can just kite and run away uh, seems very strong. Let's build that comp real quick and with a new comp that we had assembled in like the hour before our match We come across blaze of grass who's doing a hull rush So we had the perfect counter against hull rush We just put drones on the small stuff and ran away and they couldn't kill anybody because it couldn't tackle anything So, uh... <laughs> Oh, yeah paradigm linked the screenshot of the kill mill <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, oh yeah, because it was on Thunderdome for the feeder, so it doesn't it doesn't make an actual kill mill for Z kill. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. But yeah, so the first two matches were certainly something interesting. Um, this year was a very very fun wild ride because this was the first year that I ended up being a part of somebody else's team, and I still ended up being captain in the end. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I specifically wanted to join another team just to see like how do different people run a team, how do, how's the vibe, how do people kind of do the stuff, and um, learned a lot that way. Um, but yeah, because uh, our, our main Alliance CEO uh, slash FC Baltram was AFK, um, I ended up being captain mostly. <laughs> and, uh, You're a natural born leader, man. You can't I can't annoy it or can't avoid it. <laughs> can't um, be annoyed by it either. But I do I do want to say though that you you uh, are probably one of the, at least if not the best one of the best FCs that I've ever flown with um, in in terms of just like just dominating the field when when, oh, when dude, something no, happened. Man, it's mostly just maybe it, okay maybe it was just luck then when I ended up in your <laughs> fleets I don't know <laughs> I appreciate I just it but got I'm lucky. Yeah. A lot of that kind of stuff just comes down to time. I'd say most people who have a decent grasp of the game mechanics can get to this point, but I've been this is all I've done for the last six years. So you get to a point where you know yeah, everything. You, in well, and you out. have you have the experience and the wisdom, and you know every ship and every fit, and you know it it, it, it does help. But but like I've not been on a fleet with you that wasn't epic. <laughs> We so. we have had our quiet moments sometimes, uh, but yeah, it, it is also due to the help that we fly with a lot of the same people. You know, I've got hunters in my fleets who 
True. have flown with me for years on end. They know exactly what kind of targets I want. They know exactly how to They'll get those targets well and call it out and, and do it in a way where they know I can support them with the rest of the fleet to, to come, you know, get secondary and get whatever we need to, to kill those targets. Uh, it's experience, but working with people that also have experience working together. If you fly with the same crew for years on end, yeah. Yeah, yeah, actually, that, that, to come to think of it, like, on, on the, I think in particular, the one that I was thinking about with all those Tengus, where I, I never, it was beyond Tengu bingo for me that day. I didn't even know that you could kill that many Tengus. I think I had an entire page of Tengus and, and on that day, but uh, uh, apart from your uh, your fearless and, and snap, you know, decisions that kept going, there were some bushes that were pretty amazing. Oh, oh dude, oh. yeah. Um, we have an army of Command Destroyer pilots ready to go if there's fights in Amazon. There's people that do it multi-boxing. There's people that just have ten of them stand by ready to go if one of them dies. It's, uh... That's nice. Yeah, it's just yeah. because we do it so often, it's literally the only thing we do. And, you know, I will... people work on those strategies on their own time. There's people who multi-box and, like, they message me at some point. They're like, I hey, I could multi-box five of these ships. Would that be helpful? And, and you know, they start, <laughs> brewing up, they start brewing up ideas to, I... to, to, to work together, basically. I won't name names, but on my very first uh, Spectre fleet, uh fleet as JFC um, was it was an Amazon gate camp and I, I only had like I feel like at the end of the night there was maybe only like 10 people left on, on comms I mean it started strong but there was only 10 people left on comms but there were still like 40 or so on grid so yeah. I was like yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, one of the fun uh, things about our alliance as well. Um, if you're ever in like a pirate alliance, there's a people that multibox and they go hard on multiboxing. I I, I I I envy them. I I'm, I only multibox with three. That's that's my max right now. I have three accounts as well. But for example, we 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 have fleets in Hindley Village uh, every now and then. We're like, all right, guys, X up for dread alts. And I shit you not, there's one guy who X's up with nine dread alts ready to go Jesus at the same Christ. time. And he's just like, what the fuck, man? Yes, I the, can, the, the I can feel this real. I can feel two dreads right now. I could, nice. I could. It's possible, but um, it's, uh... Uh, Enot, Enot says share a gate, best gate, and I, I, I might have to agree with that only because the biggest kill on on my first night that I got was uh, that we got was uh, um, a, a typhoon, and it was because alt. F4, I want to shout out because I didn't realize until way later that he lost his command destroyer to catch that. But he he, he got he caught the typhoon on the share gate after it was called out um, by virus, I think, and um, we killed it. I didn't didn't he he died so quietly that I had no idea that he lost his command destroyer until like a few days later. But shout out to Alt F4 for that. He's a he's uh, a fun MC. He he helped me out on my first night as well. And yeah, uh, Alt's yeah. also been doing this for so long now. I don't even want to know how long he's been flying with Spectre Fleet. <laughs> yeah, but that's the thing. Like a lot of these FCs, you know, I've had a uh, we, we have so many Dutch FCs even that we did a, a barbecue at my place at one point. Because <laughs> they're just there's genuinely. Can we get an invite to the people. barbecue at Virian's place? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm uh, thinking I'll of fly. doing another one next I'll summer fly because I'll fly out for that. I'll fly. We, uh, sadly How close are you to Amsterdam? Uh, <laughs> an hour and a half by train, direct train. So it's Hell yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm going to Amsterdam again. I love Amsterdam. I want to go back. <laughs> it, uh, it was very fun though because it's just yeah, people that you've known for years, and it's very funny because um, uh, Starlight and Paradigm were also there. They were very different people from what I imagined them to be. <laughs> but that's, <laughs> it's the beauty of meeting people in real life at events and stuff like that. It's just like people that you've been flying with for for years you you always form like a mental picture of them right um my mental picture of people is always wrong i'm i, I i'm not like an amazing person with mental pictures but i'm pretty sure you were spot on I just, <laughs> I, that's it i that's how i i i I'd, I'd never met you in person before but i had a goal so i told frozen 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 was networking like crazy like this entire time getting all these people and i think even the last night he was probably getting annoyed with me because he was like dude you haven't networked with anybody what the fuck is your problem and i was like bro <laughs> i'm gonna get you very in stone shard this is gonna happen it, and it's going to and and finally i went up i went upstairs to the bar and and there's just you know this this uh tall drink of uh uh vodka and red bull uh was sitting sitting there at the bar and and he seemed like you're by yourself and i was like 
I feel a familiar vibe. And then I went up there and, and I, I said, I introduced myself because you, you were there. And, and, and as soon as you opened your mouth, I was like, holy shit, this is Virian. I mean, I've heard his voice a million times on comms. This is Virian. So I was like, what are you drinking? And that's that's the end of this. And then uh, my night got very entertaining and I ended up busting <laughs> my leg at the end of the night. But it was worth it. I, I apologize. For uh, I, didn't buy, I didn't buy you a breakfast, um, but that dude in the oh, dude, got, got, he got away because of that. That was the funniest <laughs> shit as well. I don't know if you guys were there for that. I was there. Um, I was there. <laughs> so the morning after, I... I messed up my ankle i was very out of it i had a very shit morning i was just in way too much pain to really be social and somebody bought bought me my breakfast when we were chilling at um uh the laundromat and the brunch. yeah the brunch yeah uh paid for my breakfast completely unasked was super awesome and i shit you not like less than a week after fanfest we're chilling at amazon we catch his hauler and I didn't even put one and one together. We're, we're holding him. We're trying to ransom him, as we do with most, like, haulers or, like, expensive kills. And out of nowhere, he's like, oh, hey, I bought you breakfast at FanFest. And I finally clicked. And I was like, no way. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we let him pass, obviously. Like, I can't I can't blow up that man at that point. That's the yeah, first person yeah, I've ever like, oh, allowed dude, to fly away once I we tackled them or had them ransomed. I was sitting. I was sitting in fleet, and I was like, "Ooh, some people are gonna be mad." <laughs> like, I don't. I yeah, don't care. Yeah, but I mean, like, if they're I, gonna be mad I, about that, come on. That, that's right. Too exactly. To, to, like, that's too I, I much was, of a story not to to allow to happen. I think. I think I put it. I put in my in my uh, fleet application. I was like, "Yeah, I, I got very. In, I got Daddy very drunk at Fan Fest, and I, there may oh, have been groping. That, like, I don't recall." And yeah, it was. And so, like, I said the same thing, like, in Fleet. I was, I was like, I told that story because, like, I, I mean, it's a gay camp, right? It's the Amazon gay camp. It, it, sometimes it's it's very, very exciting. But, uh, you know, I picked a time that's a little bit more chill. So you got you to gotta, you gotta tell some stories. You got to talk a little bit about that. I, I think I, I told I told that story. And um, it, and I, th I think when, when that happened, when, when, the vi when, when, when the Vider came through and, and you let him go, uh, Everybody was kind of like I, I saw some rumblings. They were like, "Oh, I've watched, I buy, buy Varian breakfast." So I guess that's all you have to do. And then I was like, I was like, I think I, I hopped. I was on comms, but not really. It was, was kind of AFK. I just was just like, "Hey, I got you drunk at FanFest. What, <laughs> what do I get?" <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's a thing though. Like that's the that's joke, the thing though. at those kind of festivals. Like that is the place to to oh, make those kind of stories and make friends. I mean, it's a random person just being nice to somebody who had a shitty morning buying breakfast, and that turns into a story of Eve that'll that probably guy, remember sure. for years. I mean, mine was very, very, very targeted. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not a spy. <laughs> <laughs> but it was well worth it. Oh, the karaoke oh, bar, like going to uh, go good in afterwards. The karaoke went hard. <laughs> oh, you didn't? You did another karaoke that night? Oh yeah, we went to the karaoke bar after uh, everything oh, closed okay. up. Uh, was that that night? No, that was the night after. I'm mixing up my nights. Uh, a little right. bit too much. The again. night after. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I was an after the... party, and then we went to to Lemmy's, and after Lemmy's closed, we continued on uh, to uh, Lebowski. I was... I was I was stripper dancing at, at Lebowski's. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we got it on happy. video. It's in uh hey, it's, there's video of that. It's in I the still shit have post some section. amazing uh, I still have some amazing photos of drunk me thinking that it was endlessly hilarious to swap t shirts with uh Damasus Kadesh. Which was uh, <laughs> <laughs> we were both very drunk. That happens. So like oh, that's funny. Man. You you were you were you were three sheets already when, when, when we were done with you, so I <laughs> yeah, I was, there's I was a reason, like, just, there's a reason getting, I paid for the taxi started. to get us to the city center. <laughs> we just we just it was getting you started. Oh, oh dude, did, did you did you ride the um the uh, scooters, scooters at all? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah all the time. Oh, Those things are dude, fucking amazing. So we we didn't like yep. Frozen and I were like so Frozen's wife, Jan was like, you guys need to do the scooters. Like like she did them one night. I don't know like four. It it, it was like the second or whatever night and we were like yeah i don't think that's a good idea because like balance not very well drinking whatever and then finally um it was the very last night that we uh 
we walked all the way to we were at the monument at three in the morning the night that you guys i don't know where you, you were getting drunk someplace else we were at, after lebowski's we walked to the monument at three in the morning nobody was there it was fucking was freezing. this after after the uh, after party the, yeah. the the pub crawl night no this oh, was no, no, no. this was the last night so this the was uh, uh okay, so okay. the night that we yeah. met you and we were uh we, it you was know. the night that we met him it was the last night yeah Hey, uh, yeah, that's uh, the the same night with the uh, after party and the pub crawl. No, 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 no. no the pub so this is after the keynote. Yeah, yeah, this I'm is very the, bad at the, stuff. The, yeah, it's the, okay. The top but of the, the world point party. being was like we took those scooters home at like three thirty in the morning, and it was a, there was nobody around anywhere, and it was beautiful. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. No, just flying through like everything with just like the ice cold air. No, uh, for me, uh, we're I'm Dutch. We're we're used to biking while drunk. Yes, that so makes it, sense. It's a national talent, essentially. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, uh, so I, the I scooters, the scooters I can do as long as so, I'm not like drunk, drunk. I can have, I can do the scooters at my own risk. Don't stand in the bike lane in Amsterdam, dude. You'll get run yeah. the fuck over. <laughs> and there's they're actually really well balanced and like it was oh, yeah, it was really easy, easy super easy. Yeah, to use. no, I was I, I was surprised at how basically you just stand on it and press the button. Yeah, there was no. <laughs> it's no, uh, no. it's also super convenient just because Reykjavik is so small. You can be across you town in like five minutes. In the that's, so in 2025, that's my plan is if I'm going anywhere farther than my hotel in this in, in Reykjavik, mm. I'm just going to take a scooter. Yep, no, uh, exactly. So nice. so I, have, uh, are, have you bought your tickets yet for 2025? I have not, just because this month has already been very expensive. I'm also <laughs> buying things for the house. I just got, like, new garden fences installed for, like, two grand, so I really need to save some money. I know, I know how that, I know how that works, dude. Like, yeah, how, like, with so much stuff that we've done in our place and frozen's too he just started um uh with his new house but uh yeah i'm trying to get yeah, a new we, kitchen done as well and it's an absolute nightmare oof. we do so my wife and i do every, like almost everything ourselves and it's 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 you do save money but it's also just i don't know it's more fun but uh, i uh um, wish i had learned the skills as a child uh but <laughs> sadly i have none of those skills so i would prefer to pay other people than accidentally setting my kitchen on fire yeah well i, I mean same same in that respect it depends but yeah uh, but, but yeah um, so 2025 uh the next fan fest i think yeah, i'll be there you yeah, just need to buy my tickets another time oh, okay yeah oh, i had to get yeah, on the we'll, super we'll, early bird special the lowest price possible and i convinced my wife uh that she's going to be going as well um so me and her both got uh tickets oh movie. nice no it's I, heather's not my wife's not coming with me this time however what we decided to do was, since it's two years from now, we're going to plan our Euro trip. And after fan, I'm going to arrive for FanFest only. And then after FanFest, we're just going to tour Europe. Oh, nice. Epic. Epic. Well, if you swing by the Netherlands. Yeah, I, that'll absolutely. Have to be a yeah, dude. We always, like, I would definitely go back. Nice. But uh, no, yeah, obviously I'll be going to uh, 2025, and it'll be nice if your uh, if your uh, wife tags along Frozen, she can uh, see your amazing rendition of uh, "And So I Got a High." No, she's she recorded it. She was at oh, this fan fest too, nice. so she loved it so much That's what I was that say. she when you actually came back. Earlier, was it, when oh, I when I brought man. you down finally, I was like, "You have to meet Frozen," and I brought you down finally. It was like, "I know who you are." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah. really? You know me? Because I got high. <laughs> yeah, 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 um, yeah. It was very hard not to recognize you from that. <laughs> yeah, so uh, for that's, the, that's the people the listening, thing. my, uh, my throat was probably, uh, my throat was probably messed up for longer than my ankle was, honestly, after the, uh, the second Same. karaoke night, because the final song of the night was, uh, uh, System of a Down, uh, BYOB. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was, uh, painful for a while afterwards. Yeah, yeah. But had, well I had worth to it. Make frozen, I had to make frozen tea and honey oh, while yeah. his wife gave him a foot massage and combed his hair so that we could get his voice back for the next day <laughs> yeah very important the uh yeah for everybody wondering too uh i did a rendition of because i got high and at the very beginning of it uh it's the karaoke version so it's like 30 percent faster and i was like why is fucking afro man on crack in this song all of a sudden because it was like because i got high because i got high because i got high and weed and, like, oh, okay. and so it wasn't at that like slow pace so i took me a little while my intent though was to go up and just throw an eve 
related. It was only going to be Eve related stuff, but I kind of went in the beginning for a good while. I was just like, okay, just try and get this out. Apparently, <laughs> like this is super fast. And then I was like, fuck it, I'm just going to be high about this shit and just talk about getting scammed in Jitta and losing my jump freighter and like just uh. So I got a little I, bit uh... at the end. I will happily admit I was too drunk to pick up the change in lyrics at the time. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, yeah, I was just like, oh, that's it, I got high, sure, sure. Well, was when we were at Lebowski's on the last night, like, all of the songs were fucking goon covers. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, oh, right. I, I love, I love that. There was, yeah, it was just a constant, Lebowski's was just constantly goon Dr. Dementia rendition. Show? It was what? epic. Yeah, but Lebowski's is such a chill place to hang out, though. The, uh, it was nice. We were there at least twice, right? Frozen, we were there twice. Twice or three times. You want to well, hear maybe. a story of how the, the bartender at Lebowski uh, became came to absolutely hate us? Yeah. Oh, well, yes, absolutely. Um, we spanned the wheel a couple of times. And uh, the first time uh, Mystical Might spun the wheel, got nothing. So we're like, ah, shit, all right. Half an hour later, he's already a little bit more drunk. And you can see the gears turning in his head of like, maybe I'll give it another try. Gives it a try, and we get two white Russians. I don't like white Russians, but sure, whatever. You know, it's, it's, it's good. It was entertaining. So, at some point, Bart, uh, Black Bart Pirate, also spins the wheel. Two white Russians. Whoa. So we're already laughing of like, oh no, we don't even like this drink so much. Um, I spiel the wind in between and get two beers, so like, alright, cool. Um, somebody else we'd hang out or we'd hung out with for a bit there decides to also spin the wheel. Two white Russians. <laughs> and the bartender just looks at us and is like, no, fucking Christ, here we go again. <laughs> and I asked the bartender, cool if we thing? get, if we spin uh, another, or if you have to make two more white Russians another time, uh, what are you gonna do? And I shit you not, the bartender looks me dead in the eye and just says, kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> and I asked her, is that going to be before or after you make the white Russian? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, please make and them first. The worst part is, we're like, we have now, our table is full of four small white Russians, and the third one was both white Russians poured into the same glass. So there's four, <laughs> four small glasses of white Russians and, and one large glass Russians. of white Russians, half drunk. Uh, on the table, we're all like fairly, we're fairly toast. It was a very fun night. A couple of strangers walk up to the bar, just random Icelandic people. They give it a spin. More white Russians. And we were just pissing ourselves laughing for like the next half hour while the fucking bartender is just like <laughs> angrily making more white Russians. Shouldn't have made them in advance, Jesus. Oh man, it was so good. Ugh. I feel bad for the bartender, but we, we were all having a good laugh about it, at least, and hey, they made good money on it. I was gonna say, I hope you tipped tipped well. Uh, they make insane money, to be fair, if you consider the prices of alcohol in Iceland. Holy moly, that's not alright. Yeah, there, it's interesting, uh, because I come from such a heavy tipping culture that I was like, wait a minute, where's the receipt for yeah. the tipping? Like, I can't, I don't have any cash on me. <laughs> They're like, you you don't need to tip us. We get paid. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> That's not Yeah, real. no, uh, it's definitely not. like. It's a small thing in the Netherlands. If you're at like a restaurant, sure, you'll you'll tip. But it's not like a, an expected thing or anything. Like It's just it's something you do if it's like really nice. Night so, Flyer. Uh, yeah. Night Flyer says he wasn't a huge fan, but somehow every night ended at Lebowski's. <laughs> I thought it was great. I think he got a, I think Night Flyer got a little bit too uncomfortable whilst I was stripper dancing. <laughs> Aww, I missed but, it until I saw it on video. So you that's right. why. Uh, you, you were sitting right there. How I know. I saw like a little bit of it, but I didn't know that there was like a full Dude, they, like, are just buying me thirty beers minute and dance. At me, bro. Where, where were you? You were sitting right there. Anyway. I was chatting with uh, um, uh, Jovian. Ah, uh, okay. I, I, you were distracted. Ooh, I, I was distracted. Uh, I guess, sorry, I get distracted by kitty cats. We, we I used to have four kitty cats, two now, but he's like, very just, distracting. Don't worry. Yeah, and he also looks like uh, what's his name from S the Star Wars that nobody likes. As you can see, she has two different colored eyes. Oh, oh Pinkerbon. Yeah, I have that uh, with my Great Dane has the same thing. 
But, uh, you just no, have one kitty? I have two kitties. The other oh, is a, uh, a 13-year-old Siamese, and she's a very lazy old grandma. Oh, oh. Siamese, yeah. All my, like, she's my, a complete two. sweetheart. Like, she wants nothing but attention and just is so gentle, but... I don't know, she's probably chilling downstairs at the moment. Uh, I raised two Siamese kittens. They were brother and sister littermates. Um, from, from like, you know, a few weeks old to... One passed away during COVID at 17, and then one passed away the next year at 18 years. Wow. Um, so they were, they were like... They lived a, a fucking awesome life, and they were always... Siamese are always talkative, and... Oh, and, they and are. always really loud. Loved super loving like monkey he loved everybody he was everybody's friend and normal was just like the the most adorable little ninja that ever existed and <clears throat> um although siamese do when they get old they they all have like i mean they had diabetes and hyperthyroid and all kinds of stuff that we you know that you have to deal with but if you deal with it they, they live for quite a while I uh, had a sphinx before as well, which is the sweetest cat ever. Because yeah, so, all they want to do is like get underneath your clothing or under blankets or something, or just cuddle up with somebody for body warmth. warmth. I love it when my yeah. cats cuddle underneath the blanket with me. Oh, and, it's so uh, nice. It's so awesome. Yeah. Dude, my, uh, seen, I'm, my cats are so used to it, they always basically sleep in my bed, usually like yeah. against my legs or something. Yep, that's where Shirley, so she sleeps on my feet every night and then zoe sleeps on my wife like just like on her side <laughs> <laughs> but uh no getting back to what i was gonna say earlier um one of the reasons i really like reykjavik for for fanfest as well is because it's such a small town uh my airbnb was down the same street like literally two minutes walking from the same in the same street as um lebowski's so oh, every uh... time that you Every time that you're not doing something, you're not already hanging out with people. In in Reykjavik, it's so easy to like check Discord. Hey, where are people hanging out? Cool, I'll be there in like three minutes. Uh, yeah, yeah. See, super... I was I, I fully intended to do something like that, right? Like I was like I it was like the week before, and I messaged in general in in Spectre, and, and I was just like, hey, I'm gonna be at Fan Fest. Anybody else? You know, X up or whatever. If you're gonna be at Fan Fest, and somebody else was like, Vane's gonna be there. <laughs> <laughs> but I, no, I, but I, I love like, it because, uh, for example, like the, the the first day, I was quite exhausted from the night drinking before, so I went to go chill at my uh, B&B, lay down for like an hour or two, and then afterwards, yeah, you just check Discord, okay, cool, a couple people say they're at Lebowski's or they're at this bar, cool, be there real quick, and then you can just like immediately get back to just hanging out with people in like no time. Can't yeah. really do that at many, uh, many other events. I would say that the hidden gems in, in Reykjavik, uh, apart from Lemmy's, because Lemmy's was awesome. Lemmy's was little, awesome. There's this tiny little place called Skuli, um, and they had really good beer. And and we were there, I think, um, I want to say one of the first nights, the first days, not nights, but it was super chill. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, I... I, so we, we, we booked an Airbnb across the street from the convention center because I thought it'd be more convenient. And it was for a lot of the stuff, but then all of the after stuff, not convenient. Oh, Jins. Yeah. She's a, uh, a big old girl. A little chunky. A little chunky. Yeah, a little bit, but she doesn't. she's not super active anymore, so. Yeah. She just wants to lay on my lap. Immediately, she's like curling up. So I'm just gonna stay here. <laughs> like, like, yeah, no, up. like, she's immediately just like, alright, cool, this is fine. Yeah. You kitties. Um, yeah, and, and Normal and Monkey both, I, I, I mean, I, we already, we already did, like, the whole memorial thing earlier with, uh, uh, Needs and, and Frank, but, um, they were both autopilots, or not autopilots, co-pilots. <laughs> both of them would, both of them would sit behind my my keyboard, or up on my shelf, or on my lap, or draped across my my hand, so I couldn't use my mouse. Um, but yeah, yeah. So uh, let's kind of bring it back over to uh, like different announcements and stuff that happened in FanFest. What did you think of the? Uh, first person shooter vanguard uh, that's coming out. so i am very curious because i've played a lot of escape from tarkov for example and i know they're they're like no this isn't yeah. an escape from tarkov but it is a, a shooty game with some progression and 
also just kind of like open extraction, etc. So yeah, they can call it a sandbox shooter, but it's a shooter where you need to extract. And yeah, I I, I very much love hardcore elements like that, where it's just full risk or reward. If you bring in a bunch of expensive gear and you die, well, goodbye. And you know, offer way around if you blow up everybody and you Welcome take to all Dark stuff. Souls. It's it's what I like. It, it it's the only reason like. You know, I can't play Call of Duty because it just loses my interest after five nah, minutes it's because boring. it's like, alright, cool, I'll just respawn, alright, who cares, you know. But in games like Tarkov, you have those battles with other players that you can call back and like, you know, how we flank these people and, and stuff like that, and you can talk for that for like ages. Um, so, it falls under the line of shooters that I'm very interested in. Um, I'm, I've already signed up for the, 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 the stress test and everything and all that stuff, so... Fingers crossed. If it's a good shooter, then uh, that'll be very fun. So, fun fact about that. My wife hates EVE. She's never played it. She refuses to play it. She nev never will play it. She played EVE offline, obviously, at FanFest, but... She even denies that, though. <laughs> she even denies that. She played, I mean, I mean, Varian can contest. I'm pretty sure she, she kept you... Uh, at bay while I was trying to find Frozen, like just ho held, held, held oh. you there. kept, kept, kept yeah, you, yeah, yeah. kept you entertained. But um, uh, she said that she'd be willing to play the shooter because we we play Hunt Showdown, which is similar to Tarkov, um, and just more like you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A couple of friends of mine who I used to play Tarkov with also play Hunt Showdown. So yeah, I love I love that game. I haven't played it in a while. I should get back to it. But yeah, so like hopefully you know maybe. See goes. Yeah, like I said, I've got my fingers crossed for it. I can, I can only hope they, they deliver a shooter that feels nice, because that's the, just going to be the main, most important thing, honestly. Yeah, it plays it's, nice, it's, and uh, and it's tied into Eve. People will be playing it. That visceral feeling you get when you yep. pop somebody, you know, or or when you're like, pinned down. Like if if you have adrenaline, like with the tar like Tarkov and Hunt Showdown, those games, you get you get that adrenaline because it, it's there's a little bit more on the line, right? Um, the then, the then gameplay feel is also just very important to me. In Tarkov, if you yeah. can, like line something up just right and, and like oh, you know, yeah. pop somebody right in the head from like a good distance away, hard to describe, and, and but like, it feels like... satisfying and like you know the stakes so, behind it. So it's just immediately like a yes. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if they'll be able to capture this in 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 the Eve shooter, but like in Hunt Showdown, I feel like the weapons. Uh, they f they feel like how I would expect them to feel in real life, even though it's yeah. not like VR or anything. But like that satisfying, like the the, the 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 amount of time it takes to fire, the the um you know how it kicks, you know how it handles, yeah. how long it takes to reload, um like that 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 kind of stuff all kind of plays into that um because you know a few seconds and it's the same it's the same in Eve Online if you're doing like solo, especially if you're doing solo like dog fight frigates um you, you got 30 seconds maybe a minute if it's a long drawn out battle right and and like a few seconds makes the difference like whether you win or lose whether you overheated that module whether you burned it out or you know whether your opponent had the right ammo loaded yeah <laughs> Yeah, but that's also the same thing in Tarkov. You know, sometimes you win a fight just because somebody was using a shitty uh, weapon or the uh, exactly. or ammo, or they hadn't repaired their weapon. You pick it up after the fight and you realize their their gun jammed, and you're just like, "Hey, nice one!" <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> yeah, it's like so many things like that with people. It's the same in Eve. You never know going into fight if somebody's got a good fit on their ship, or you know, the Varger that I, I saw some uh, a couple of mates killed a Varger. That was just a completely untanked artillery fit with no tank whatsoever, and it's like, <laughs> it was a very you, know, big you never bag. know. They could have taken that fight and just completely ate shit if it was a regular Varger, but now they have a two bill kill mill to laugh at. You know, that's uh, the risk and reward. Yeah, I have a lot of hope for uh, the Eve shooter. Um, <clears throat> I played Dust 514 back in the day, um, and I was very disappointed with their decision making of like it was like ps3 well, during the we'll ps4 never transition know what went on behind the scenes there but my god something you guys weird have went phones, on behind right? the scenes you guys, you have, guys phones. have phones well so what uh, i heard i was talking to a uh, dev that will remain unnamed because you know I, I don't know how truthful this stuff is but from what i heard is that 
PlayStation or Sony paid them a whole shitload of money to be, you know, exclusive to the PS3. There was a PS4 transition that was coming up, but CCP decided to, you know, go with that exclusive, but not realizing how much it would cost to get the game to be playable on PS4. And so they cut their losses. Um, they, and, uh, or cut, they actually made a profit, a lot of money off of it, but because they didn't update it, they weren't looking for it. It didn't need to be a long-term game for them to make a shit ton of money off it. They made money off it, apparently, like right away. And then oh, okay. was told, oh, if you want to be on PS4, you're going to have to do some crazy-ass shit to your code. Um, yeah, the architecture between PS3 and PS4 was like a big leap. It, b between PS2 and PS3, it was like quite easy, but like between mm -hmm. PS4 and PS4 is a way different gamble, uh, or so I've been told. Um, yeah, and obviously to be a PC or a PS3 exclusive, yeah, that would have netted God knows how much money, but... Uh, bad timing sadly yeah and i was but i loved that game um and i think that there's there's definitely areas of improvement that were needed and would you know if it had extended to now that it would be probably an insanely awesome game um on a lot of different levels um with hope you know all of this is i i am a bright-eyed child even though you know i'm an old ass man that just always uh, believes in the good well um I, yeah I, I will say that we we have another show that hasn't It'll air eventually someday, I, I promise. Um, where I learned that Frozen, he just has so much faith in humanity. I'm the exact opposite <laughs> of that. I have faith no, in uh, you. Faith in humanity, but uh, I, I, I have faith will in call myself pessimistic, but realistic, maybe. <laughs> but uh, uh, but realistic I, is I, going I to be hope. pretty pessimistic. You're, you're, you're a young whippersnapper, Varian, and. <laughs> Yeah, you've got to have a good outlook, man. That sounds man. about where I was before I am went now. So I, I think you're on the, you're kind of on that path. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> um, it's funny because I, I had the same thing with a, a bunch of colleagues. Um, there's uh, I work with a department of like ten people, roughly. Uh, all people that have been working for each other for for a very long time. I've been working at the same company like six years. Some of the people there have been working there for like 10, 15 plus years because it's a good place. Um, there's one lady who is in her like 70s still works there um but she is a very funny uh unfiltered german lady <laughs> um, she says it exactly how she means and her in her dutch sometimes has, still has like it's good dutch but like there's still occasionally where words fail so she she replaces it with uh german words and <laughs> The there was a, a a good moment of where we were we we're, were at a, a quarterly meeting in Germany um, for one of the companies we work for, and um, a couple remarks led to another, and it was her also just like talking to me at some point where we were talking about ages, and she's like, "Oh yeah, but you're also some like 19 in in just her like unfiltered way with a couple words for place, <laughs> and like and I was stuck between half laughing and half being like, "Ow." <laughs> <laughs> Good shot. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, it's funny coming from her, just because you know how she means it, but um, the way she puts it to words at times is interesting. Uh, so, so I have, I have, uh, you know, and I was wrong about Dust because I thought Dust was going to revolutionize gaming in general uh, for MMORPGs. It's going to be like if you want to be a top-notch AAA. MMORPG, you got to have a secondary game that latches I in mean, that's it, completely it could have different. Been. It, it could have been. And so, uh, from my understanding, it, it's it's not because it wasn't a good game that if or or a bad game or anything to do with why that's why it failed. It just there was it was a monetary thing that it needed why to it be failed. on PC so, because again, yeah. your entire player base is PC players. So, uh, so the yeah. the like the only market is a bunch of nerds that play Eve that also happen to have a PS3 and aren't like already swapping to a PS4. Yeah, and it, so it sounds market, sounds like yeah, this I remember is what when it came out time, and I was you know? I was like no nah, no, but I also am not I'm not, like if if like I wasn't where I am now like how involved I am now because like I I have I had my rage quits and everybody can attest to this in Eve that that lost eve and everybody that's lost eve because obviously none of us have won eve um is you 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 rage quit a bunch of times and then you just you're just in you're just all in after that and, and you're and lost it, to it, eve you've lost <laughs> you've lost to eve 
I've yeah. uh, I've won Eve every now until and then for like a very well, short time. Until like, you, I until you, at most. until you truly win, like Frank and needs, then mm -hmm. they've they won. They've no the they've next lifetime. Won. I'm playing Eve, man. I don't know what you're, <laughs> like, you're talking about. It done. You know, yeah, here, but you man. don't know. But the, the, I do. I do. A, I know. If New there character. is a hell, it's uh, where you end up stuck doing nothing but incursion running for the rest of your life. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Um, but yeah, I I think that the new thing that they got going here, we'll see how much it ties into Eve. Um, the ability That's to the big thing, like if it really shapes Eve and then like actually makes an influence, it's gonna motivate people to be like, maybe not my favorite shooter, but I can you know, you know, play this as my second favorite shooter and still you know influence my other game eve right well and the thing is is that the, I, I think the marketing on this is done really well the, or the and the concept of how we're going to implement this game it's a two for one you're now paying twenty dollars for two games that you're forced to have yeah, and two games but you don't have to play both so, of them you can play one or that... the other but to that effect, what also is really cool about that is if if this is true and everything works the way that that we think it's going to work, I can have my wife play one of my alts because they're all paid accounts, <laughs> right? <laughs> so like, you can pick you can pick Amelia or Henrietta, whichever one you want. You can't be Gwen because I'm Gwen. <laughs> but then other than that, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I I really does hope it like actually lets us affect things because. Yeah, like I said, if it's not your favorite shooter, but you can use it to also help flip that system that you've been working on in EVE or something like that, you know, how sick would that be? Also, like, back in the day, they had um, the ability to bombard from outer space and talk about shooting back as well. I, uh, I did a couple of those when I was still very, mm -hmm. very new to PvP, and uh, I had, I shit you not... The, the guy that was playing Dust on my side was one of the guys that was in my, like, high sec level 4 running corp back when I was complete new bro. I uh, shit you not, his name was Hippie Joey Weed God. <laughs> uh, so you can imagine what he was like trying to organize these, like, hey, you need to be into this system and, and do an, an artillery strike right here. Yeah, Dave's not here, somebody... man. Dave's, Dave's not here. <laughs> it was complicated, but I did do a couple of those drops, uh, or like bombardments, and I didn't see the other side because I didn't have a PS3, but it still felt really cool to just know that in some other game you're suddenly like calling in bombardments for people. Like, we got kill mails. That. that was the yeah, other it's thing. Bizarre. Like... <laughs> it was so cool, like completely unrelated. But that nailed the feeling as well, because what you're doing is you're sitting in this giant ass fuck off spaceship in the middle of nowhere, literally raining on bombardment down on who knows who's down there. You don't give a shit. It's just some people on a planet. But that's how it also felt, because I didn't have a PS3, so I'm just like bombarding some random gamers that I don't care about. <laughs> it's fucking cool. <laughs> yeah, it, it. so we'll see how much that can tie in. Um, it doesn't sound like that's going to be an immediate thing, but I feel like if they can get that in down the road, that that'll be a huge jump. Um, it sounds like they're talking about maybe having spaceships that blow up, maybe rain like mm. some of their stuff down onto planets moving forward. Um, I wonder how much that will be like actually organic, or if that's just like you know spawned missions, etc. Yeah, so we'll we'll see what uh, how much this actually does interact but the the base idea i think of what they put out to us at fan fest got me super excited because i'm not actually a really big first person shooter guy at all um but i liked dust 514 um and i do like to mess around in um pvp and pve aspects of first person shooters but i really like to have the pve access so that I can go yeah. and learn how to play the game before just getting shot in the head like 40 times, which is not really a big issue in a lot of shooters, to be honest. You just you just, you just have to go through that. But it's like, every once in a while, I just want to relax and just jump in and shoot some stupid NPCs. Um, but depending on how live... It, it seems like it is going to be an MMORPG first-person shooter, like you said, with some progression and there's goals and objectives and stuff that that you need to take part in and yeah i'm kind of curious how they're going to do progression related stuff as well because it's tying to an mmo that has 20 years of progression technically for players behind it and 
I don't know if there's many ways for a shooter to like, you know, keep progressing your character over like more than say a year. Or like if they have to do like prestige things or stuff like that. I'm I'm very curious, but we'll find out. Yeah, no, I'm super, super excited to see what, what comes in December. I've signed up, like you said, with the play play tests and stuff like that. And uh I'm I'm hoping daily login rewards. I don't think that's gonna cut it. <laughs> daily <laughs> login rewards. There you go. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, I hope they would immediately implement that. <laughs> but, uh, but but yeah, so I I, I definitely feel like uh, they really did a great job of pre presenting all of this type of stuff at Fan Fest. Did you go to any of like the uh, uh, James Webb Telescope? Uh, uh no the james has telescope I, like this that day i was mostly just socializing with people I was mostly like hanging out and, and talking to people so i missed a bunch of the presentations there were some uh, really good presentations as well i, I would there say the were. james Webb telescope is probably my favorite because i'm a a space nerd through and through my mm. father worked on all the space shuttles i think that's the only uh, one i really regret missing out on but the rest of the time yeah i, I know yeah, that i'm gonna miss most of the that. presentations because i'm just there to hang out with people that was one of the things that made FanFest better than any cons that I've gone to. So I go to Gen Con, like, 100,000 nerds gathering for Magic the Gathering, Dungeons and & Dragons, and all different types of crazy events that are going on there. Um, and uh, that's, like, my yearly pilgrimage, you know, kind of thing. Um, but... Uh, Going to Fan Fest has become the new true pilgrimage, you know, at this point. Because, mm. like, it was... My wife goes with me to Gen Con every year. My wife plays a little bit of EVE, but she's not, like, anywhere near hardcore or anything. Like, she's mostly able to just be like, yeah, I'll come on and murder some people with you guys and fleet every once in a while. But uh, other than uh, that, just give me my ship, you know? Like, and <laughs> It's also uh, the reason I miss um, events like G Fleet quite a lot, because... Um... The, the last G Fleet especially, um, it really didn't focus on like having a ton of presentations. We we had like one live fleet as well, with also something like 20, 25 PCs or something, which was also kind of cool, a bit like the uh, the NFSI Rome. Um, but the rest of the event basically felt more like a two day long summer barbecue in Germany with a bunch of people just, you know, a pizza place right on their corner, a bunch of tables where people were just, you know, drinking and, and, and you know, talking to each other, and that's kind of what this fan fest did a good bit better as well. Just allowing people to socialize is the the main thing to, you know, we're actually there for. Yeah, and that's what made it so epic. And it was you were able to go up and just talk to anybody, uh, because everybody wanted to just talk about, you yeah, know, uh, and, it, uh, and uh, it felt very welcoming. It felt very much like this is what we're here to do. This is what we're gonna have fun. Um, talk about and hang out and you can just walk up to people who do you fly up for and boom you've got like yeah. i'll work a long conversation you can be in with somebody i think uh I've, i think that was last fan fest or no, i think it was uh i don't remember which event it was at but there was also a, a point where one of the ccp uh employees was on stage also being like this must have been during the like intro or, or like the first presentation or something they were also saying the exact same thing where it's just like here's the the, the two-step guide to you know talking about spaceships with nerds and just be like here's my name badge can i see your name badge who do you fly <laughs> with and that's it cool now you've made a friend you're talking about spaceships congratulations <laughs> Yeah, so she said that, you know, it was better than Gen Con. I think it was better than Gen Con. And Gen Con is usually, like, my, like, if you beat that bar, then you're on something, like, in a special realm. Because that's, like, for the past, you know, since 2004 is when I started going to Gen Con. And it's been, like, I've, I've failed at the pilgrimage sometimes. But uh, mostly for, like, the last 15 years, I think, though, I've been pretty solid at, like, this is what we do. We go to yeah. Gen Con, um, <laughs> and now I'm gonna be like, "This is what we do. We go to Fan Fest. We're going to Iceland every yep. year." And then it's like, "Oh, we better wait until 2025." All right, cool. I'll just make my way. <laughs> <laughs> I happen to have learned that one about Liquidity Festival this year, which is uh, gonna be a fun one next year as well. Three days of uh, straight up drum and bass. That will be fun. Oh, epic, dude! Awesome. Um, and, so. Uh, is there anything else that we want to talk about with FanFest before we uh, start wrapping things up here a little bit? 
Uh, po, 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 po. Uh, nothing think... immediately comes off the top of my mind. I mean, <laughs> we've talked about most of the events, which is the keynote mostly and getting drunk with friends afterwards. <laughs> and you did the pub crawl, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. So, I, I didn't pay for tickets for the pub crawl uh, because I was too late, I. it was all sold out, but I ended up just following people around and buying my own beers, which is essentially the same so, thing but anyway. But you couldn't get into the after party then, or were you uh, able to get... So here's no, the thing. Maybe you can get into the after. Oh, <laughs> so here's the thing. Um, one of ticket. my one of the the people that we were uh, having dinner with that night for um, from uh, Kiakte's friends, uh, all of the the people from uh, um, Fun Inc. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Great. We had great a, a yeah. We had a huge uh, dinner at um, the Hard Rock Cafe. And turns out one of them still had a ticket for the after party, so I bought it off of him by paying for his dinner. Fair nice. deal. Um, but so here's the thing, Arwen, who I was staying with for for Fanfest, didn't have a ticket. So as we get up and we're at, standing outside the front of the the after party building, uh, we're talking to people. We're already fairly toasty, so everybody's already being like quite social. We're talking to to, to CCP Swift at the out, uh, entrance. And I shit you not, because Arwen didn't have a ticket, and CCP Swift has a developer lanyard. We asked if CCP Swift could help us uh, smuggle Len uh, Arwen into the, the party, which he <laughs> did. We bought him a beer, and then we realized the people at the entrance weren't even looking if you had the blue armband. They were looking if you had a lanyard. <laughs> So Arwen could have gotten in for free anyway, and I definitely didn't need to pay the 30 bucks for the ticket, which was a bit annoying, but <laughs> I was already too drunk to care. I did see them at the beginning checking bad or checking uh, for I think, land. yeah, at like or the very land, the, first the people bracelet. who entered, they checked, but after afterwards, yeah. like half an hour later, I, yeah, pretty much everybody was getting in. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, we, get, we, we got the CCP Swift the beer for it, and uh, we had a very fun night. And yeah, so I continued to, to Lemmy's. I didn't make it in until way later, so I just ended up having dinner with uh, CCP Aurora um, and me, Nightflyer, and, and Frozen's wife were eat, eating dinner with Aurora. Uh, it's, uh, it was fun. The, the after party is definitely more of a like party for everybody. So it wasn't too long before you know me and a bunch of people were like, "All right, cool, we're moving to Lemmy's," and uh, until Lemmy's closed, and they're like, "All right, cool, we're moving to Lebowski's." <laughs> uh, but that's fun because all those bars are in walking distance, and you can get a little bit of fresh air in between, and then just uh, continue having a fun night. You know, what's funny it, is I think yeah. we, we must have just missed you because we ended up at the uh, monument again. Yeah, we've been we we went to the monument like three or four times to get people's uh, pictures for people. Like I just kept nice, on nice getting there, requests, yeah. and I was like, "Yes, I'm I'm only gonna be here, you know, this year." And then after, of course, I was like, "Well, like, I'm going back, so I guess I can get more pictures next time." I'm glad um, they uh, fixed all the planning as well because last year yes. it was practically impossible to to read the names. I was there. I like some of the lettering was just undecipherable. Yeah, I heard. I've heard. I heard the horror stories, and I was but, very uh, happy. This unveiling was a true good unveiling. Of, like, yeah, it yeah. was really easy. Actually, uh, Samson's wife uh, would just within three seconds she could find the name uh, got without the app, without kids. anything. Yeah, she just minute. was like, yeah. "It's alphabetical. Got it. Brr, okay, this is where it is. <laughs> right here." <laughs> my uh, my favorite was when we spotted a like segment on the plates. That were very clearly all the same name because you just see suddenly everything lines out perfectly, and you read it's like Eve N T Camera O One for like tournament <laughs> stuff, stuff like that, like very clear like multi box accounts that you know CSP just didn't filter out of the the name list. <laughs> so there's like a genuine like pretty, I'd say like one third of one of the the metal plates is just straight up like copy paste accounts for cameras and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Uh, awesome, awesome. Well, I think we'll go ahead and uh, get things uh, kind of wrapped up here. But before we do that, I always want to make sure that you have a spotlight for any projects that you're working on. If you do any content creation, if you got maybe this crazy website that tells people about things that uh, you know. I don't know. I think maybe I think PvP, he runs that PvP, he runs some kind of yeah um, some kind incursions, of right? It's yeah. incursions. It's, so and no and <laughs> and B and. Uh, Something along and, those lines. It's not that important. <laughs> but yeah, not so blue. Wait, 
not. <laughs> pur pur purple. Yes. There is definitely purple involved, yes. Yes, yes. Somewhere along the line. Uh, so, yeah, I just want to open it up if you've got anything that you want to talk about and any shout-outs that you want to give, um, you know, just spotlight on you. What do you want to talk about? Um, so, obviously, a, a big hidden uh, part of how we keep Spectrefully operating is Odyssey. I get to, to be the person who does most of the talking and, and gets to, you know, come on to interviews and be the, the, the face, but behind the scenes is Odyssey uh, 2049, who keeps everything running smoothly and keeps us from losing our fucking marbles. Uh, she doesn't get the credit she deserves. Um, other than that, we have way too much money in our SP wallet at the moment. We're looking for events and other stuff to, to burn some of that stuff, so we're probably going to be doing a couple events like uh, handout fleets that we've done. Um, we're trying genuinely to like come up with more ideas of how to spend our SRP money to, to give you guys more cool events. So keep an eye out on our announcements and uh, our fleet listings on our website, which I'll happily chuck in chat as well. But that's pretty much it. Awesome. So yeah, definitely check out Spectre Fleet. You don't need to be in anything. You can be in the NPC Corp all the way to, you know, goons. You if know, you're a one-day-old character, we'll happily buy you a frigate so you can come along and uh, blow it up with us. If you're an experienced, you know, bitter vet that just wants to do some different kind of PvP, it's all there. We do all kinds of fleet from blobs to frigates to 250-man battleship fleets we've done. So... Yeah, and there's uh, yeah. it's Eve, so there's always room for newbies. You know, we'll figure figure out way, a way to get you to the, into the flames. Uh, yeah, and if you want to FC as well, if you want to give it a first punt and uh, see what it's like to uh, command an army of angry nerds yourself, then this is also the perfect place to try. Yeah, that's uh, we just uh, me and Samson just signed up uh, as well. The interview process is awesome and fun <laughs> and, and actually it was a very good. drunk, quick interview at uh, FFS, but. <laughs> Uh, watch but, out for them, them angry nerds oh yeah uh, but yeah thank you all for watching thank you so much Virian for coming on this has been super thank epic you, dude. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll have to much talk about me. after uh, you know the changes all go through and, and we get to see what the shooter looks like we'll have to have you come back on and uh, give us an update as to what's going on in, in these areas and if they were actually good changes I think there will be though So I'd be, uh, I'd be happy to it's been a pleasure boys Awesome. Um, all right, so we're going to go ahead and wrap things on up here. So thank you all for listening. If you're listening, thank you all for watching if you are watching. Um, and we definitely have a new branding scheme that's going out there, Federation Frontline Report. That's what we are in EVE now. That's what we are on Twitch, Twitter, you know, all all of the places that, that it's important. Yeah, if you Google Federation um, Frontline Report, you'll find a lot of stuff. <laughs> so we're, we're going to be... Um, rebranding things and we're really looking for people who want to get out midnight Wednesday, uh, Wednesday nights you know just before midnight or midnight or so eve time um, we're doing FFLR fleet you know basically uh, uh, NPSI of our own special you know accord to a certain degree uh, it's sort helps of to faction be, warfare 101 too sometimes. yeah it's it's it, it helps to be in faction warfare you don't need to be in faction warfare you just need to know what being pirate means it just it just adds that extra bit for our FCs and we're like uh, yeah okay, hey he's he's safe don't don't shoot him he's blue so stop shooting him but primarily, we're trying to do this as like a corp thing. So, you know, if you're interested in a group of people that you want to join up with that's doing faction warfare, mercenary contracts, and really yeah, just wants to have with the like network. a Wednesday night a week that we all just hang out together. This is our hangout time as a corporation. And we'll pick up our, our neutral and, and enemy buddies and maybe go kill something somewhere. Um, and. Also check out our new website, federationfrontlinereport.com. Um, we'll get all of that kind of stuff into the show notes. We're also going to be doing a special giveaway after the show here. Um, Virian being our 1,000th follower and many, many, many more that came in after that. Um, we're going to kind of review all of those um, people that followed us and talk about that. And thank you guys very much. We're going to mess around, you know, in the new Crimson harvest that's going on um but yeah so also check out declarations of war super cool podcast um we're part of the network and that's the oldest mercenary oldest podcast i think that still exists oldest today, podcast, yeah. uh for eve so thank you all very much thank you once again virine for coming on have Happy a great night everybody